Welcome to this week's episode of This Week at Endicott. I'm Brianna Marr. And I'm Brooke O'Leary. On Wednesday at 5 p.m., head over to the Relay for Life kickoff event in Lower Callahan. Need help with MLA or APA? Head over to room 206 in the library at 7 p.m. for perfecting your paraphrasing and avoiding plagiarism. The election is quickly approaching, but how well do you know the candidates? Head over to the mock debate and trivia night at 7 p.m. in Lower Callahan to hear Trump and Hillary battle it out. The event will be followed by a Q&A session with prizes and snacks. On Thursday, the Red Cross will be hosting a blood drive in the Fieldhouse. Stop by the Community Service Office for more information and sign up to donate. Now let's take it to sports with Matt Pritchard. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of EC Sports. For EC TV, I'm Matt Pritchard. The field hockey team finished up their season with a win over Salem State this past week. They will now move on to host Western New England in the CCC semifinals on Wednesday. Speaking of Western New England, the men's soccer team came out on top against Eastern Nazarene in the CCC quarterfinals, and they will host Western New England Wednesday for their CCC semifinals. The women's soccer team topped Salve Regina in the CCC quarterfinal, led by Offensive Player of the Week, Charlotte Pernice. The football team dropped their final home game to Salve Regina 41-20. They will continue their season Saturday the 5th at the Coast Guard Academy. The men's and women's cross-country teams finished up their CCC seasons this past Saturday. The men's team finished in second out of nine teams, while the women's side finished fourth. The women's ice hockey team opened up their 2016-17 season with a 2-0 victory over the University of Southern Maine. They'll continue their season Friday at home versus Johnson and Wales. The men's side also started their season up at Norwich University. The girls tied 3-3 and will look to get their first one of the season Thursday at UNE or Saturday at Nichols. With most of the fall sports season wrapping up, make sure to log on to ecgulls.com to see all the postseason awards for your favorite team. And that'll do it for EC Sports. For EC TV, I'm Matt Pritchard. Get out there and support your Gulls. At 12 in the LSB Auditorium, professional vocalist and speaker Nanette Perrot presents From Jazz to Dickinson to Entrepreneurship, an event that aims at using the arts to help audiences learn about cultural diversity. Then at 7.30, stop by Tia's Theater in the VPAC for the play Midsummer's Night Dream. You won't want to miss it. If you can't make it Thursday, check Blue Buzz for additional dates. Show your school spirit at Basketball Blast Off at 9.30 p.m. in the McDonald Gymnasium, where there will be food trucks, a DJ, and giveaways. If you're feeling confident, take a half-court shot with a chance to win $1,000. Now let's look at Shake My Head with Riley and Lexi. Thanks, guys. Wait until you see what we have in store for you today at Shake My Head News. I'm Lexi Lozano. And I'm Riley Fitzgibbons. To start off this week's turn of events, a woman's flatulence during an operation started a fire that resulted in serious burns all over her body. Japanese media reported that the patient in her 30s was having a form of laser surgery at the Tokyo Medical University Hospital. But the woman let one rip during the operation with the far belief to have ignited the laser. The resulting fire left her with serious burns over much of her body, including her waist and legs. The incident happened in the hospital's Shinguku ward in April, but the, deaths, uh, the details have only emerged recently following an investigation into the flames. Sometimes you just have to learn to hold it in. A night on the lamb can really work up an appetite. Reports say a hungry Arizona man stopped at an in and out in the middle of a police chase Wednesday night. Officers tried to pull over 35-year-old Joshua Atkins around 10.30 p.m. for an outstanding warrant, but the police say he refused to stop. A police helicopter followed Atkins as he drove through Phoenix and two suburbs. Policemen even watched as Atkins went through an in and out drive through and appeared to order food. Police say the man eventually got out of his vehicle and ran into a backyard. He was, allegedly af he was arrested after allegedly trying and failing to get into a home's back door. Atkins was booked into jail on, sus on suspicion of unlawful flight from law enforcement, domestic violence, and unlawful imprisonment. So much for being in and out of there. <laughs> That's a good one. A 47-year-old Ohio man accused of dumping manure at his county's Democratic Party headquarters has been arrested. The Warren County Sheriff's Office said Monday that James Pinnell was charged with criminal mischief, which is a third-degree misdemeanor. The county's Democratic Party chairwoman said a truckload of manure was dumped outside of the Lebanon headquarters on Saturday. She said the party had a security camera after the same thing happened in 2012. The local GOP in the Republican-dominated county northeast of Cincinnati denied any connection. Pinnell tells the Associated Press he is anti-abortion. He also asserted responsibility for the 2012 dump. He says he was identified with the help of the security video and he will try to get an attorney but expects, expects to pay fine. 
He's due in court on Thursday, and hopefully it will not get too messy. A Ukrainian man has officially changed his name to iPhone 7 after an electronic store offered the latest Apple product to the first five people to do that. The 20-year-old iPhone 7 got the coveted prize on Friday. He said he might change it back to his original name, Alexander Turin, when he has children. The price of the phone starts at 850 US dollars in Ukraine, while the name change costs the equivalent of $2. Sim's friends and family were shocked at first, but eventually supported the idea. His sister, Tatana Pan Panani, said, it was difficult to accept and hard to believe that it's true, but also added, each person in this world is looking for a way to express himself. Why not do it in this way? There are a lot of things I would do for an iPhone 7, but change my name is not one of them. Find out more about this week's story in this week's World News segment. That's all we have for you here today. Thanks for joining in on this week's shenanigans. And thanks for being foolish. Let's take it back to the desk. Looking forward to hockey season? The women's home opener versus Johnson Wales is on Friday, 7 p.m. at the Bork Arena. Now let's check out World News with Chessie. Hello everyone, this is World News and I'm Chessie Kim. A diamond tycoon in India has once again given away hundreds of cars and flats to its employees as a bonus for meeting company targets. Subject by Dolakia, who runs a diamond export firm in India, announced that his company would give about 1,300 cars, 400 flats, and pieces of jewelry to its employees ahead of the Hindu festival. He said the rewards were in recognition of the outstanding performance and dedication shown by employees in the last five years. The company would spend an estimated $7 million under the loyalty program to reward an unknown number of staff from a total workforce of 5,500. Most employees receive presents of some kind from their bosses during the festival, but they are usually boxes of Indian sweets. However, Dolakia has been making headlines by giving expensive gifts to his employees since 2012. A Ukrainian man has officially changed his name to iPhone 7 after an electronic store offered the latest Apple product to the first five people who do that. The 20-year-old Mr. iPhone 7 said he might change it back to his original name, Alexander Turin, when he has children. The price of phone starts at 850 US dollar in Ukraine, while the name change cost the equivalent of two dollars. Mr. Savin's friend and family were shocked at first, but eventually supported the idea. Colin Glover, a 51-year-old man, has been suspended by British Airways after pictures emerged of a man performing a sex act while wearing women's stockings at the controls of a plane. Pictures also include a pornographic magazine laying on an aircraft's control. It is thought the picture were taken on two separate occasions on different flights. He denies he is the man in the photographs, but he has been suspended from his job while British Airways investigates. He is likely to be permanently banned from flying if he is found to be the man in the photographs. At least one of the photographs appear to have been taken in a, a Boeing 777, the world's largest twin jet aircraft. Getting together enough money to buy a house can take years to do or even more. Get a second job, eat out less, downgrade your technologies. These are just some of the things you can do to save. Or you can do what this woman did and come up with an ingenious plan to get someone else to pay for it. The woman, known only as Zia Oli from China, managed to uh, raise around about $15,000 by convincing her boyfriend, all 20 of them, to each buy her an iPhone 7. She then sold the iPhones by um, a Chinese website and bought a house in the countryside. The story was widely shared on the Chinese social network, Weibo, where more than 30 million comments were posted using the hashtag 20 mobiles for a house. Some people criticized her and called her shameless, but most praised her for her ingenuity. Former Manchester United midfielder Philly Marin has taken an unusual post football career step as he continues his bid to become a Catholic priest. The Northern Irish man who earned 27 caps for his country in a career was this week ordained as a deacon 
in the Catholic Church. While many ex-players go into coaching or television punditry, Marian has ditched in his life of glamour for something of more spiritual existence. He earned up to $550,000 during his playing career, even dating a model. Now, though, he has turned his back on that life, first enrolling a pontifical Irish college in Rome in 2009. He had previously spent two years studying philosoph philosophy in it Italy before undertaking a four-year theology degree in Belfast. That's all for this week. Now back to the desk. On Sunday at 9 a.m., the Pete Brady's 5K is taking place in Lynch Park. All race proceeds benefit Pete's Park in Beverly, and everyone is welcome and encouraged to join. To register to run for Team Endicott, please email lrawls at endicott.edu. Then, on Tuesday at 7 p.m., the live streaming of the 2016 election results will take place in Gullies. Stop by for election-related activities, patriotic food, and root beer floats in Shirley Temples. And that's all for this week, girls. See you next time.